Cryptocurrency Files. All things creepy, cryptic, otherworldly. What's up, weirdos? Holy shit, where'd you guys all come from? <laughs> I sat down on the floor and you guys all came in. Welcome. How are you guys? Yeah. Come on. Right? And we all have to thank Patches because he saved yes, the day. he did. <laughs> and brought us a microphone so we can record the show to put up on the podcast later. So, Patches, you're the best. Thank you. Well, guys, we're Oddity Files, the, the podcast. podcast. And uh, this is Clayton Abbott. And that's Kitsy Duncan. And we appreciate you guys being here. Yes, thank you. Um, has anybody listened to the podcast before? Okay. Yay! Three oh. people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, I always struggle with um, microphones. Try not. I always blah, blah, yeah. You can hear me? Okay. I always struggle with live podcasts because yes. we're half selling the show, but still <laughs> trying to keep the regular listeners happy. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> but we're a paranormal podcast where we talk about weird stuff we find on the internet. I do curse, but I can tailor that. So if anybody doesn't want me to swear, please raise your hand. God, you guys are fucking awesome. Thank you. <laughs> so, some shows we come to, they say, like, so we are family, like a family con, so just please, like, just watch your, watch your language. We're like, they're talking to me. Okay, like, we will. <laughs> and then, but it's actually comical when we have to do that because we're like, the craziest freaking thing <laughs> happened. <laughs> we just time. hit the brakes on our words really quick. <laughs> I'm really bad at holding a mic, so let me know if I need to, like, pull it away from my face. What is the panel next to oh, us? Oh, I thought that was me. <laughs> I'm going next Apparently door. Apparently <laughs> there's a party next door. Like. Anyway, we're a paranormal podcast where we find weird and creepy stories on the internet. We try to outdo each other yep. um, and educate each other and just kind of have fun with it. It's, yeah. And this, we're in the basement. We are. At GalaxyCon Louisville. It gives the podcast dungeon a whole new I meaning. I was going to say, this is... Pretty much a podcast dungeon as well. <laughs> Literally, that's for you, Marjorie. Um, but yeah, yeah, we talk about um, some things that are creepy, some things that like you just can't explain, like UFO sightings, or we don't get too far into urban legends, but we Santa definitely, Squatch. I know. Look, we both have Bigfoot shirts. On. I know. <laughs> We're kind of obsessed. Um, but yeah, just things and you know, famous reports from all over the world that the both of us might not know about. We talk about famous like exorcisms and just all those things that sometimes make you stuff go, we wanted to know yeah, more absolutely. about. Like, go ahead and finish that because No, I said just things that make us go, hmm. <laughs> I <laughs> yeah, can never so, remember the song every time you say that. So. Yeah, it's a lot of fun and we've been doing it actually when this episode airs, it will be the week after our one year Podiversary. Podiversary. It's a word I made up. I'm sticking to that. I'm sure I'm not the first one to use it, but I thought I made it up. But yeah, we've been doing this for a year. Yep. We've been doing these Galaxy Con shows all over the country. Yeah. We've been doing several other Comic Cons, and we're just excited to meet people like you who are into the same weird shit we are. Right. So we actually got started doing this because we have a TV show on Amazon Prime by the same name, Oddity Files, where we go ghost hunting all over the world. We've been really all over the United States. Waverly Hills. Waverly. Is in our new season. Yep. Uh, wow, talk about haunted. Bobby Mackey's Bobby is in our Mackey's new season. Bobby Mackey's insanely haunted. Actually, three of our six episodes for this new season were Are filmed in Kentucky. Kentucky, yeah, it's crazy. Octagon Hall down near Frankfurt or Franklin or yeah. something. Starts We've actually investigated a lot, and now that I'm thinking about it, a lot in Kentucky throughout the years. Yeah, y'all are haunted. Yes, you are. I don't know if it's the Kudos. river or what. Yeah, exactly. Well done, guys. Yay. <laughs> but yeah, we uh, we go and sit in the dark and talk to sometimes just ourselves. Yeah, and sometimes uh, Clayton sleeps. I do. If it's a very inactive place, I fall asleep <laughs> very quickly. Every time, and I try to get it on video every right. time. Um, but yeah, we have a ton of fun doing it, and then we just got thinking... It was after a drive home from an investigation, actually. Octagon Hall. Octagon Hall. And we were both very sleepy. 
And so we threw on a podcast, and then we were just like, we could do this. Yeah. I'm like, I mean, no one's going to listen to it. It's just going to yeah. be us. But And like we our could family members. Right. <laughs> um, but it's been awesome. We've had people like Norman Reedus on the show. Bruce Campbell's been on the show. Um, Milo Ventimiglia yeah, we've for had all the some, fangirls out there. Some awesome people join us on the show. And now we're a year old, and now we're here in Louisville with yeah. you all. Today's episode, we go up every Friday. Yep. In today's episode, we just had Josh Arnold from the Bob and Tom Show. Yep. So, Josh, if you're listening, thank you for that. Um, but, yeah, we usually kind of start off things and see if anything creepy is going on in our world since the last time we podcasted, which for us in real time was two days ago. Two days ago. And we also work our real job together. So it's always funny when we go to podcasts, we're like, so what have you been up to? It's like, I've been at your house all day. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or we were just in this city together the right. entire time. Um but yeah, nothing creepy's going on in my house. Right. Um, I don't know. You're better at this than I am about the whole state of Mercury. But it's done. It's done. Okay. Well, hopefully things will iron out. Yeah. Mercury retrograde ended the 21st, okay. I believe, which was yesterday. yesterday. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. Because yesterday I did hit a, a pretty high point of almost losing my mind. It was close. So we have a uh, producer, DJ Jimmy, who has decided to leave us for six months to go work aboard a cruise ship. And so we've kind of been, like, on our own. And when I was leaving my house yesterday, I called him because I was absolutely losing my mind, just, like, one of those days that, you know, I'm sure a lot of people have had. And I was just like, I'm going to freak out. (laughs) Help. (laughs) We do miss him. We do. We know he's going to listen, so I miss you. (laughs) Um, So nothing creepy other than... No. Losing your mind. Yeah. We'll blame Mercury. Yeah, I always do. I stopped wearing my Mercury retrograde bracelet because Mm -hmm. I'm afraid if I wear it when it's not retrograde, it's going to be like it's retrograde. (laughs) Right. So those of you who don't know what Mercury retrograde is, it's when the Mercury, the planet, looks like it's coming towards us instead of away from us, and it's just supposed to fuck up everybody's world. Um, and, and it does. According to Facebook, I mean, everybody's like, oh, God, it's Mercury. Again. And any time that we can find an excuse to blame something on something, we will. If it's, yeah. if Mercury's not in retrograde, we blame jet lag. Every single time. Yeah. Even I though we're just in Kentucky and we're from Indiana. When we got back from Australia, we blamed jet lag for a solid two months. I think it was a year. Yeah, anytime something went wrong, we're like, oh, gosh, that, that day and a half. Jet lag, yeah. <laughs> I do have some paranormal in the news if you would like to yes. hear it. So, from this is from the website Celebrity Insider, and the story is, is Kurt Cobain's house haunted, home where Nirvana's singer committed suicide, is reportedly haunted by his ghost. Okay. The house that Kurt Cobain committed suicide in went on the market, but it isn't finding a buyer due to reports that Kurt's ghost is haunting the home. Should we go in That's why it? it's not finding a buyer? I know. I thought that was like a selling point. I mean, it is for us. I'm surprised Zach Bagans doesn't own it already. Dude. Okay. Um, Though it might seem that this is just some sort of fictional lore, the source of the reports actually comes from Kurt's widow, Courtney Love. Well, Courtney's kind of batshit. So, (laughs) (laughs) I love her, but she's as crazy as I am. Um, In a sit-down interview with... No, it... In a sit-down with Interview Magazine, Courtney spoke about being visited by Kurt's ghost and that it has caused people to believe that Kurt is haunting a place. It is the home where he took his life because Courtney has admitted to seeing his ghost and because he died in the house, people are scared that the place is haunted. So there's no proof. Just her. Yeah. Okay. And it goes, I'm not going to read all this word for word, but she goes on to say after she moved out of the house when she was still married to, who was the original guy who played the Hulk? Lou Ferrigno? No, not that guy. The, oh, the first Incredible Hulk. Like, uh, Ed Norton. Ed Norton. Was she married to Edward Norton? Uh, oh, she did. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Ex-boyfriend, not ex-husband. Yes. So when she was living with Edward and um, Francis, who was little at the time, she uh, they moved and Co- Kurt followed her to that house. Uh, so I think you're exactly right and that Courtney is the one that's haunted. Yes. I think it's called guilt. 
That's true. He just face palmed. <laughs> and I am a lover of 90s alternative music, so yes. I had to. We just to. talked about that. And if you like what you're listening to and you don't hate us by the time you leave, we'd love for you to subscribe to us on all the podcast apps yeah. and rate and review as long as you're nice and um, <laughs> and follow us on all the the social sites we're just oddity files yeah. on everything and like i said we really do have so much fun doing this we're super thankful for galaxy con they've always ah. um hooked us up just and with all their shows letting us come and and talk to each other and tell more stories so just two weeks ago we were up in minneapolis and had a great audience you guys are here, and we're super excited. Yeah, and I wasn't even going to come to this show because I decided I was yeah. going to take the weekend off, but I'm here because of this. So thank you guys for giving me a reason to come to Louisville, and I know how to say Louisville correctly. <laughs> but we will get to the part that we usually do. So like we said, we find stuff online that each other might not know about, and um, yeah, you guys just get to experience that as well. So what I tend to do during live podcasts, I try to find something more times than not, that relates to the event that we're at. And so this time, at our very, very first live podcast of the year, so I'm bringing this full circle. Okay. We were at Whorehound Weekend in Cincinnati. Yeah. Yeah. I was there. Yay! Oh, awesome. Thank you. I came back to watch you because I saw you there. Oh, oh thank you. Dude, we just became best friends. <laughs> <laughs> but I did notoriously haunted movie sets, right? Yes. So... Here, I'm not going to go the haunted route. I'm going to go cursed movie sets. Ooh. Yeah. There's so, a lot uh, of them, actually. There are a lot of them. And some of these are crazy. And how I've never heard of it, well, I'll get there. So, sure, the making of a movie sounds awesome, and it always gets the glitz and the glam and the Hollywood. But really, when cameras start rolling, things can get extremely dangerous. Filmmaking is full of possible perils, and the stuff that goes wrong, it just happens on every set. Whether yeah. it's minor... Not so minor, it happens. Sometimes In paranormal shows. Right. Sometimes <laughs> accidents just keep happening, and mistakes become deadly, and that's when things get a little oh. more creepy. So, I don't know if you know this about The Shining. Um, so, the director, Stanley Kubrick, was never known to be like an easygoing individual, but he really turned up the intensity for The Shining, According to actor um, Scatman Crothers, Kubrick demanded 87 takes of Shelley Duvall, Jack Nicholson, and Danny Lloyd silently just walking across the street. What? 87 takes. Right. That's so, I mean, something ridiculous. that's so just like, yeah. you know, Monday. Though Nicholson and Crothers enjoyed making the film, Shelley Duvall was a completely different story. Um, Kubrick tortured the actress by keeping her isolated from the rest of the cast and crew and constantly berating her. No wonder she looked so freaking stressed out. Exactly. The worst was forcing her to do the gimme the bat scene 127 times. Who is this guy? Try <laughs> pretending like Jack Nicholson is going to kill you. Like, <laughs> oh, you know what God, I mean? Oh, God, no. That's already exa- exhausting. And then having to do it 127 <laughs> times, I would look how she looked in the film as well. But maybe Absolutely. that's what he was going for. So Duvall was so stressed out that she actually began losing clumps of her hair during production. Aww. After The Shining, she more or less retired from acting, and some wonder if that was the reason why. Yes. One million percent, yes. yes. You go, girl. Go hide somewhere. So, however, Duvall's terrible treatment wasn't the only tragedy, you could call it. Later in the shoot, a massive fire broke out and destroyed two whole sound stages, one of which was the set for the infamous bat scene, and they never found out what started the fire. Really? Yep. Um, So no one knows whether it was, like, faulty equipment, human error, but... You know, we'll say it's a curse. Yes. So Twilight Zone, this one is absolutely insane. So even before Twilight Zone, the movie, hit theaters in 1983, it was already one of the most infamous, you know, movies ever made, largely thanks to the director, John Landis. The film was split up into four parts, each helmed by separate directors. The brains behind the classics like An American Werewolf in London and Animal House, Landis was in charge of a segment called Time Out, which features a terrible bigot played by Vic Morrow. The prejudiced protagonist is sent to different periods in history where he just magically morphs into victims of discrimination. Thus, like, kind of getting a taste of his own racist medicine. Yeah. All right, so here we are. Eventually, Morrow's character winds up in Vietnam where he tries to save two Vietnamese children while an enemy helicopter looms overhead. So to get this scene, the director Landis broke 
multiple child labor laws by shooting in the middle of the night and letting kids get near a number of explosions and oh. pyrotechnic effects. Even though he was warned about the dangers, he went ahead with the scene anyway, allowing the, helico the helicopter to just fly in next to the explosions, whatever. Tragically, as Moro carried the children across this river, the chopper was hit by one of the explosions, and it oh. crashed into the river, landing on top of the actors. One what? of the kids was crushed and drowned, while Moro and the other were decapitated. Oh my god, that is freaking horrible. Awful. Did he go to jail? So... The horrible tragedy brought the about questions. a number of lawsuits and cr criminal charges against the director, but despite his blatant just ig just ignoring all safety regulations and everything, he was acquitted of accidental manslaughter. I the, call bullshit. The families of Moro and the children sued the production and settled out of court. Shocker. Yeah, probably got more money. Crazy. That way. Um, okay, so this one, The Wizard of Oz. You wouldn't really. Expect that a childhood classic would be a scene of a number of horrifying accidents, but The Wizard of Oz wasn't so magical on set. Oh, I've, I've heard some of these. The film got off to a really bad start when actor Buddy Epson, the original Tin Man, had to be replaced after the aluminum dust from his makeup coated his lungs, forcing him to sit in an oxygen tank for two weeks to recover. Awful. Although it didn't... So although this one didn't kill him, Bert... Lar, the, the Cowardly Lion, mm -hmm. had to wear a 90-pound costume made of real lion skin <gasps> on a 100-degree set. Oh, I never knew it was real lion skin. Yeah. Ew. That's disgusting. Yes. Yeah. Margaret, it's a different time, but still, ew, right? <laughs> Margaret Hamilton, the Wicked Witch, suffered the worst of all, so her costume caught a wire after a stunt gone wrong, giving the actress second and third degree burns. <gasps> Complicating things, her green makeup was copper-based, which made her injuries worse because when she got burned and then the copper got into, yeah, it was just an, a nightmare. And they had to clean it all off with, like, rubbing alcohol. Oh, my God. So she's sitting here burning. The copper's, like, getting oh. into her. And now they're just pouring rubbing alcohol over no. her. Right. <laughs> That's probably when they filmed the, like, the whole unmelting stuff. <laughs> Sorry, that was That's terrible. terrible. <laughs> I, yeah. So things got even Ickier, when Hamilton's stunt double, stunt double suffered burns and scarring on her legs from a surprise explosion from one of the broomsticks. It was like uh, a mechanical malfunction that exploded. And, oh. Yeah. Several of the flying monkeys were hurt when they were flying Good. wires. Those things scared the shit out of me <laughs> as a child. But their, their wires would just snap. Oh, they would just God. Snap. This one is so sad. Toto was injured when an extra stepped on his paw, breaking it and having forcing him to have a, a dog double for two weeks. Oh, no! <laughs> Poor Toto! And look, no, the decapitated child yeah, did not get that reaction. Even, no, <laughs> but Toto, the puppy... <laughs> right. Um, and so then every, I think everyone knows about the whole legend of the bunch that hung himself when they're, like, skipping down. That is, of course, just an urban legend. Yeah. Where it is they like, because they have all these exotic birds in that scene, and they chalked it off to, oh, it was actually a bird in the background, but it does look like a little munchkin just swinging. Um, I was never able to find that. I don't know if I've watched it. Well, since. there's like, it's the that scene's not in there anymore. So if you watch no. any sort of um, like cut, that's you've got to find the uncut. Exactly. Yeah. So this one is. And again, there are probably a hundred film sets that tragic things have happened on, um, so I just picked and choose a few. But The Abyss, which I don't know if you know The Abyss, but James Cameron is known for his blockbusters. The Abyss was not one of them. Is it water? Yes. Okay. So it only earned $54 million domestically with oh a $70 million budget. Oh. Right. So That sucks. In the main set of The Abyss, it was filmed inside an abandoned nuclear reactor, but while there was no radioactive material on the site, the cast and crew spent several hours filming there. Ed Harris had to film a scene where his helmet fills with water while being dragged 30 feet down into a tank. When he couldn't hold his breath any longer, a diver waiting nearby would give him a regulator. Um, not surprisingly, he nearly drowned on multiple times. Of course, because cause that's how people drown. Right. This one is terrifying. So Cameron, James Cameron, got so wrapped up in filming... As, I mean, obviously, he's underwater as well. Just like okay. He didn't realize that his oxygen tank was running out of air. Oh. Right. So he tried to use his underwater PA to call for help, 
but a nearby cinematographer couldn't hear him. So $70 million, and we can't get a quality PA. Um, things got even worse. And we thought we had budget problems. Right. So he's in a 7.5 million gallon tank, 35 feet below the water. So he's not like, you know, forever down this there. This is giving me anxiety. But he's trapped in like this heavy equipment, uh -uh. you know? So he tried to get free of the gear, and as he began swimming up, a diver sees him, and so they like go over to help him and like give him the, the regulator. Unfortunately, the backup regulator broke. No. So now he's trying to break free, and this diver's like, no, calm down, holding him, trying to give him this broken <laughs> regulator. And it was only by punching him <laughs> that James Cameron could get free and swim up to the top. Oh, my God. So he almost drowned twice in one instant. Um, but I guess, you know, when you love your art. I guess. Um, There's suffering in yeah. all of that somewhere. And, I mean, there really are so many more that I just didn't go over because I could just scroll and scroll and scroll. And, of course, they're the ones, like, I spoke about in March. Um like poltergeist and all the oh. like haunted ones were just like poltergeist story is insane. Ghostly I wish I things knew are the happening. Episode where I did like all the stuff and all yeah. the things. Like so many people died on all those sets. The Omen is another overly famous like. Oh no! And we have a, <laughs> <laughs> a sad microphone. Very um, sad. But yeah, if you guys want to hear about the um, the haunted sets, go back and listen to episode. Blah, 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 blah. At live at Horror Hound Cincinnati. I don't know what number it is. There have been too many numbers. It was our first live podcast, though. It was, so. and we were, like, low-key nervous. So yeah. we were also in the middle of our real job, which We drank is, wine at the podcast table. Right, we did. Mm -hmm. um, which, when we first started doing the podcast, we are like, oh, this is just going to be fun. We're just going to, like, drink gonna and drink talk and about and, yeah. paranormal stuff, and then, like... You know, whatever. Now, it's, we never drink anymore. No, and we're, like, trying to squeeze in the time. I mean, we're right. super grateful that we have the listener base that yeah, we do. Absolutely. And we love every single one of you. But it's it's work sometimes. Yeah. Not always. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But with our schedule, sometimes, you know, we do have to record, like, two episodes in one go or three. Just because we travel with our jobs so much mm -hmm. that sometimes we just have to do it. And... If if we were drinking for four hours, because the we, episodes end up we being We tried like, that, and I didn't end up wow. so well. <laughs> yeah, neither was it. And so then we get to the end. And I mean, sometimes the listener submitted, like, email stories. They're just worded a little oddly because, you know. Punctuation's off. Sometimes. And so here we are having drank for three hours, and we're like, the. Jimmy, cut that out. Yeah, that's, that's probably when we stopped. <laughs> probably. Right. That's why that first time we ever recorded, we recorded four back to back. Oh, that was rough. And there is a an episode oh. that never made it out. I think it, it was number four of it that was. first night. I remember. All, I think we went through two or three bottles yes. of wine. Because and I was we went through multiple bottles of wine, and I was talking about something that was like very scientific. Remember, it was the <laughs> I don't the remember. star that was like emitting like signals at an intelligent like oh, end pattern, yeah. and I'm like. Half wine drunk, half just tired, hot probably, and I'm just like, star three nine four two. Like I lost interest. Yeah. <laughs> uh. Oh well, I guess I I have a st I actually have like yours was a multi part sure. story. Mine's a two parter. Ooh. So um, I couldn't decide on one single story. So this week y'all are getting two urban legends. For the price of one, or free, because, you know, we don't charge to get in here. Both are Kentucky-specific, one right here in Louisville, and one is in a teeny tiny town about 40 minutes outside of Lexington. And the story goes a little something like this. Let's start locally first. Right here in Louisville, in the Highlands area, is Cherokee Park. How close are we to that? A few miles away. Yeah? Some weird shit going on there. <laughs> Inside the park is Logan's Fountain that is a sort of cute, sort of creepy statue of a baby cherub-like version of the Greek god Pan. He has the hindquarters, legs, and horns of a goat. You know, sweet baby demon fountain right here <laughs> in Louisville. I mean, certainly I'm not going to judge any of you. Um, but he, who Pan is and what this statue, cherub, demon, baby is based off of, 
Um, lost my spot. So he's recognized as the god of fields, groves, wooded gains, and often affiliated with sex. Because of this, Pan is connected to fertility and the season of spring. Well, you know, happy-go-lucky. Um, the ancient Greeks also considered Pan to be the god of theatrical criticism. I don't like him. Yeah. Um, the word panic is ultimately derived from the god's name. No reason to like Pan. None. <laughs> so this statue is everything you're imagining. It looks like little baby Satan, or what we would all envision as Satan. Needless to say, this is what drew me to the story for no other reason than this creepy looking statue. I'm scrolling along and come across the most adorable little Satan baby statue in what I think is the Bible Belt, and I was committed. I mean, who am I to judge? So other than the creep factor, what's the deal with Pan? He's passed by hundreds of vehicles and pedestrians on the daily. This lone water fountain sits at one of the highest points in Cherokee Park. Its intricately carved statue has sat as a silent observer since its erection and dedication on August 35th, 31st. Wow, August 31st. I know, this pan is trouble. August 31st, 1905. So he's been there a hot yeah. minute. For decades, late night park visitors have claimed that on the full moon, Pan goes for a stroll. He just hops up off the fountain and just goes for a stroll. According to local urban legend, on nights of the full moon, Pan comes alive and leaves his post atop the fountain under the cover of darkness. He is said to prowl the park, causing mischief and damage. I feel like this is a Goosebumps. Like, <laughs> oh, you know, I bet. This absolutely is... Straight out of goosebumps. Okay. Keep going. Oh, Excuse gosh. me. <laughs> I shouldn't have drank that Speaking soda. of demons. Yeah, there it is. Um, so on the morning after a full moon, anything that goes wrong in the park, like turned over garbage cans, scratched cars, or any kind of unclaimed shenanigans, they just blame poor Pam. Pretty harmless and cute little story. So are you ready for the creepy? I've got another one. Uh, my second story is from Marion, Kentucky specifically Pilot's Knob Cemetery, and particularly the Witch's Grave. The cemetery is located off Ford Ferry Road in Marion, and you'll know the Witch's Grave because of its particularly ominous look. The grave itself is covered with rock, not dirt. There's a white picket fence made of wrought iron marking the edges of the grave. Just like that one individual one. Yes. Okay. The base of this fence is a series of crosses that connect end to end so that her spirit would be trapped within the borders and has several spots in this wrought iron that looks like it was pushed out from the inside. Ooh. Mm, uh, by a powerful force. Sorry, page, page turns. <laughs> <laughs> Small footprints can often be seen in this gravel on the grave, according to those who visit the site, and the grave's stone looks brand new despite the fact that it's over 100 years old. Mm -hmm. I mean, it could have been replaced. I don't know. I don't know the guy that did it. So. <laughs> Some, like, landscaper knocked it over and just, like, oh, I better just, fix like that. not going to tell anybody. <laughs> <laughs> but who's buried in this grave? And what kind of crazy shit went down to call it the witch's grave? The lore of the area is, in the early 1900s, a woman and her six-year-old daughter were accused of witchcraft, Mary Evelyn Ford. That's the daughter. But their trial was foregone. Instead, the townsfolk burned them at the stake. In the 1900s? That just didn't seem right. It's very Oh. <laughs> That's how they do things out there, Marion. Oh, gotcha. Really? Have you been to the cemetery? No, we'll tomorrow. Oh, you'll have to let us know. Um, so they were birth boned at the stake. They feared repercussions of their judgment and took precautions to prevent the child from returning in the afterlife. The child lays in a steel-lined grave. No one knows where the remains of her mother were placed, but Mary Evelyn's final resting spot 
is why no one goes to Pilate's Knob at night, except for this guy. <laughs> the frightened townies were afraid that little child would come back and haunt them and likely cast spells on them. I mean, if I were her, I would, because you know they didn't do anything wrong. Um, during daylight, all is well within the cemetery, but at night is when Mary Evelyn is said to rise from the grave. If you're there and witness the apparition and are standing too close to the grave, she'll reach out and pull you in close to the grave, and then she will feed off of your strength. It's been the, reported the apparition will make funny faces from inside the wrought iron fence to get your attention, to kind of go over, oh, look at this cute little ghost girl. She just grabs you and pulls you in. <laughs> but feeds off your strength. Yeah. It's like once you're sleepy, she lets go. Uh, just like... It didn't go any further than that, so maybe she kills you. I don't know. Okay. Ghosts can't kill people. Okay, so it's been reported the apparition, blah, 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 blah. The spirit is said to look to be five to six years old, uh, wearing a white dress with scorch marks at the bottom. Aww. Of course, can I just say that of course she's in a white dress. Always. Uh, all ghosts. Every. Instead of the lady in white, the child in white. Um, and she has long blonde hair that is singed at the ends that frames her little baby face. Gosh. <laughs> Many believe that although she cannot escape the fence of crosses that surrounds her stone-filled steel grave, Mary Evelyn is looking for her long-lost mother. Oh, heartbreaking! <laughs> But sweet baby, super terrifying, Mary Evelyn isn't the only one haunting Pilate's Knob Cemetery. There's also said to be a wandering soul called the Watcher. Sounds like a uh, superhero to me. Right. Like he's the brother of Thanos. Which sounds all badass superhero-like, but he is not. The story of the Watcher is he was murdered at the Swinging Bridge near the cemetery and now haunts the little witch's grave as well. He's not afraid to follow the, the living around the cemetery and make his presence known. Stories say he's trying to get to the witch baby, but he can't get in because of the wrought iron crosses that fence her grave. The Watcher is said to be the soul of one of the child witch's murder victims. That's deep. Very, it's kind of scary stuff. Um, the Watcher can't hurt Mary Evelyn because of the fence around her grave, but whenever anybody comes near... He chases them away, allegedly. Witnesses report that when they encounter the Watcher, a feeling of being watched, duh, will come, <laughs> come about them, along with the feeling of fear accompanied by goosebumps. Occasionally, people will report that they've heard voices or loud, heavy footsteps coming from behind them, usually associated with the Watcher. Others have said that they see crosses floating in thin air over Mary Evelyn's grave. Whoa. That like really doesn't have anything to do with anything, but I just yeah. thought I've never heard of that before. And the creepiest thing of all, if you lay down on the baby witch's grave, they say, I mean, who does that? So hops to the fence. Yeah, it's just like a little fence. So steps over the fence. Steps just over the, into the gravel takes and out. lay down in the rocks. That, oh, I lost my place again. Um, that you won't be able to get back up on your own. They say to only do it if you have a friend there with you to get you back up. Well, she's taken all your strength. Right. Allegedly. Right. Um, and an, unsaid, an unseen force is said to hold you down. And it takes another human to be able to pull you back up. So there you have it, kiddos. There's a whole lot of creepy going on here in the bluegrass state. It is a bluegrass state, right? Okay. Yeah, Whew. To me. <laughs> and this is just the tip of the iceberg. And like we said, you guys have all the haunted yeah, places well, here. So actually one, and like I said, we have a show on, on Amazon Prime. And one of, um, one of the investigations that has had the most longing effects on me personally was a Kentucky investigation. Brayden Burke. Benton County. Oh. Also in Kentucky. Well, and Jailhouse then, Pizzas. And, and Brandenburg, yeah. Brandenburg, that's it, yeah. It's crazy. It, yeah, y'all are haunted, <laughs> and we freaking love you for it. Um, but yeah, that's what we do. We tell stories to each other, but we like to open up live podcasts 
at the end to if any of you guys have any haunted stories or paranormal, Bigfoot's okay, aliens are, was anybody abducted by aliens? Please. No. <laughs> anybody meet Bigfoot? Since you said please. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we'd like to hear your stories. There's a couple rules. It, it's got to be a story. One big rule we've added recently is you can't pull up a Wikipedia page. So you've got to have the story in your head. You can't read it, yeah. even if it is your own personal story. <laughs> um, but does anybody have a paranormal story they'd like to tell? Get up here. Can you share it twice? Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Only because I've had a story before. Yes, yeah, yeah. of course. Get up here. Yeah. yeah. This is Valerie. We met Valerie when we investigated the Bistro 301. 301. Right across the street. Right across the street. I thought that looked familiar. Close. Oh. Exactly. Because it's a, a haunted hellhole. Oh, yeah. It was Sorry. pretty much. For it, sure. it really is. <laughs> yeah. It was a great episode that wasn't able to air. <laughs> Well, um, so I, if you listened before, they told the story of my baby cousin who saw his deceased sister as a baby. Um, that was, that's me. I'm Valerie. That story, if you ever heard that. I forget, you said there were only three listeners here, right? Yeah. Earlier. My bad. Never mind. Now you know what I'm talking about. Um, <laughs> but for those listening at home. Yeah, exactly. Um, okay, so I'm going to tell a funny one because I do have one that's super scary, but I think for small ears might not be yeah. good. Okay. Um, so um, before she was born, when I was a young, um, wild, early 20s woman living with my two nearest and dearest friends, everyone said, do not do this. This is a bad idea. You all will fight terribly. You may not be friends after you live with each other for a few years. And we're like, no, it'll be fine. So we all moved in together. We're living in this large house, myself and my two best friends. And surely enough, we start fighting pretty quickly. And we're the closest to friends. And um, it didn't take us long, maybe a few weeks of living there where we started, like things started being a little strange and we couldn't like, we would compare stories and things didn't make sense about maybe like where things were moving around and things like that. Uh, one of the roommates, she, not a believer, very skeptical, not interested even in the notion that, that there could be something weird going on. Um, I was way too busy. I was not paying any attention to anything that was going on at the time. And my other friend was like, ghosts. <laughs> and uh, so w one night we're sitting there watching pretty certain Law and Order SVU, and uh, we dun, dun. all the time. <laughs> and we're in the main level of the house, and we're all sitting there. And we must have been getting along this week because we're watching TV <laughs> together. And we just start hearing coughing, very loud coughing. We're the only ones there, and it's upstairs, close to where my bedroom was. And we're all like. Like, they smoke cigarettes, so maybe, and I'm like, they cough a lot, but, like, we're all right here together. Go back to watching TV. A few minutes later, we hear coughing again. Kind of sounds like an older lady, maybe. And we're like, okay, that's weird. We all are sitting here hearing this, but we can't. Nobody else is here. And so we're like, okay, well, I guess. I'm going to sleep on the couch tonight down here. <laughs> um, and then fast forward to another period of time, maybe sometime later. We're fighting. We're not getting along. We're all out one night. Uh, partying really late into the night, and then we come home separately, riding with different friends and things like that. My One of our roommates and I show up first, and long story short, the house was kind of trashed. Like, pictures knocked off the wall, a table knocked off. I not remember over. this story. I don't think I've told you. Oh. Um, and oh. I forgot about this, actually, a little bit. And, um, and so my Hannah and I are like, damn, Amanda's really mad at us. Like, she came home this time and, like, oh, trashed the house. <laughs> and we're like, wow, man, she's really mad. This isn't like her to do this, but we must have really ticked her off. And it's the middle of the night, so we're like, wow. Like, and then uh, she, like, later we find out the next morning she was already in bed, like, passed out of sleep, if I remember correctly. And she was like, I, no, I came home through the bottom door at the back of the house and went straight to my bed. I don't know what you're talking about. What? No rhyme or reason, the house was trash. Nothing stolen, nothing robbed. Definitely didn't look like anybody robbed us. Plus, my aunt and uncle owned the house and lived across the street, so nobody had been in our house. Coughing right? lady was pissed. Coughing lady was mad at us. But we named her because there was one more incident where there was actually a sighting of her, and we decided to name her out of respect so that she would leave us alone. 
Um, we named her Dolores. I'm not really sure why, but we just yeah. works. Sure. We Dolores. and that was Hannah's idea. We gave her a name. Um, so my other roommate Hannah's standing in the kitchen. She's she's the, the non-believer. She's the one who's still even after hearing her, she's like, I don't even want to talk about this. Um, and then I guess Dolores knew that and was like, I'm gonna show you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so Hannah's in the kitchen. She she's um, opens the fridge and she felt like she thought something was behind her. And, or like, she just got this weird feeling and she said she like opened the fridge door and she looks down and at the bottom she can see feet <gasps> at the bottom. And so if you can, I, you know, it's an old school fridge, you open, pull this way for mm -hmm. listeners. I'm pulling towards my body or whatever. And, and if you can imagine just right there below, she like shuts the door and nothing's there and what? she's all... So it goes okay, we have a ghost. She's like, okay. <laughs> I believe. <laughs> I believe. We're here. Hang on. So that was pretty much the extent of seeing Dolores. There were, like I said, it was like 10, 15, 12 years ago, I guess. So like the details of what went missing when, but there it was just, oh, and then we started to realize there was just so many weird things we couldn't put together. And so that's that was the really story good. of Dolores. Oh, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Dolores sounds like she's abandoned. Yeah, she was an abandoned spirit, probably. Yeah, yeah she's probably still there haunting whoever's living there now. But that's what we do, guys. We like to hear creepy stories, and yeah, we like absolutely. you guys' creepy stories. So if you have a creepy story that you were a little nervous to be pulled up here to tell, reach out to us online. We're Oddity yeah, Files please. everywhere, and then our email address is oddityfilescrew at gmail. We want your stories. Um, we want you guys... If you like what we do, tell your friends. Definitely check us out on Amazon. Yes, and we appreciate all y'all new people. We definitely do. And this is our last live podcast of the year. So um, it's, I think we're like, it's bittersweet. Like we've been going since March. I mean, almost. Yeah. The, we had three live podcasts in like four weeks or in something. In October. Yeah, in yeah. October. So we've been, we've been really hitting the ground running, but we're so thankful for this yes. year. This year has been so great to us and I'm really excited for I am too. And before you guys go, I want you guys to all squeeze into the middle and we're going to do a selfie with all y'all behind yes. us. If you don't mind, if you don't want to be in the picture, feel free to get the fuck out. But we love you guys. Thank you so much for being Thank here. Thank you so much. Oddity Files is an independent production. Intro music created by DJ Jimmy. Wah, wah. The opinions expressed on this show are ours and ours alone. Our logo was created by me. If you like the show and would like to support us, you can watch Oddity Files on Amazon Prime. You can buy merch at oddityfiles.com. You can follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Oddity Files or on Facebook at facebook.com slash Oddity Files. You can even join our weird little Facebook group called Oddity Files Fan Group. It's a closed group, so you'll need approval, but we do approve everyone. Most importantly, you can help us spread the word. Tell a friend, tell an enemy, tell your boyfriend, tell your ex-boyfriend, tell your grandma, tell everybody, share and retweet. Just help us get the word out. We appreciate each and every one of you and couldn't do this without you. If you have a story you wanna know more about, or a personal story you'd like to hear us read during an episode, email us at oddityfilescrew at gmail. If you have a corrections corner, go ahead and give us a call. It's 317-300-6699. If you have a venue you'd like us to do a live podcast at, reach out at oddityfilescrew at gmail.com. Also, take a couple minutes, rate, review, and subscribe to this podcast on all the major podcast apps. It also helps us get out there and in front of the public eyes. And remember kids, weird is the new cool.